This is the General Electric 29GS6AH, a SCART CRT television released in Australia around 1997. Made in France, featuring a curved 68cm tube with a very green appearing phosphor when the television is turned off. The TV has a bit of sentimental value to me. Back in 97, there was a local hi-fi shop that stocked Lerva, Grundig and Jewel amongst other brands. Being European brands, they were SCART endowed. General Electric was also a brand the store carried and they had this very model. I used to take my Saturn and other consoles into the shop to test on the televisions. To see it after 25 years again is a little bit of excitement for me. We have a two-tone color going on with the lighter color on the back shell here with a slight green tinge in it interesting pattern little squares embossed throughout all the side of the plastic as for the other side you'd expect exactly the same however there are two differences here we have the buttons to control the television without the remote channel up channel down volume up volume down and the power on and off also we're going to divert here quite a bit art direction by stark designed by Stark and some other chap. Philip Stark is an industrial designer. His resume consists of over 10,000 different designs that he's made through a variety of objects, including a number of exotic CRT designs. This is a television made with cork or recycled wood in the cabinet. Another exotic piece under the Telefunken badge. Lastly, we have a television under the Normandy badge, this model being the Zio, Normandy Zio, an unusual specimen, again, with somewhat of an aquatic feeling to it. Look at the antenna, it's somewhat alien in appearance. Believe it or not, that device in the bottom right corner of the picture by itself, that is the remote control for the telly. It's got a scar socket, so that's a pass. As gamers, we talk about playing in vertical or horizontal mode. Well, how about this then? Looking from the back, we'll first go to the connections. RF in the top left corner. SCART, an upside down SCART, which is AV1. AV2's got our composite video in with stereo left and right in. Funny how those little RCA jacks are positioned in such an odd sort of way. We also have a window where the white area is, revealing the chassis. Now, in advance, I did some research and suspected that this did have the TX92 chassis inside, and that pretty much 100% confirms that it is the TX92. However, we have a bigger mystery in front of us concerning the model number. On the back here, we have 29GP480A. You're probably wondering, how did I get the other model number that I quoted in the title of the video? It comes from the catalogue. This is the very catalogue that I picked up back in 1997. General Electric catalogue that has various things. There's some reprojection televisions. The question or well, the TV in question here is this, 29GS6AH, looks exactly the same. The clue to tell you that it has SCART, because it's not mentioned anywhere in this booklet that this thing, any of the televisions have SCART, is that it's made in Europe where my finger is pointing. There's the 59 inch version, or the 59 inch, 59 centimeter, sorry, made in Europe. And then there's the little 34 centimeter one, this one does not say made in Europe. I've never seen this, so I don't actually know if it's got a SCART or not. Add to all that, at the same time that what we just saw came out, there was also the Quadra range. I remember seeing the General Electric Quadras. These have a flatter tube, darker tinted tube from memory. However, these did not have SCART, unfortunately. None of them here are listed as being made in Europe and none of them had SCART, unfortunately. 
Add further to that, we're going to go further down into the rabbit hole. This is a Normandy catalogue from 95-96, a German one. Note the Normandy, Thompson technology. Keep that Thompson in mind. They have a model here, this Spectra ST70KH, that looks very, very, very similar to what we've got in front of us, the General Electric. There's a little headphone port there, which this General Electric also has. I didn't know until I noticed that black dot here in the catalogue. This is saying that it's seven, 70 centimetres with a 66 centimetre tube, yet physically it looks identical to the General Electric. Remember a moment ago I showed you the General Electric Quadra, the ones without SCART. Again, returning to the Normandy catalogue, we have here the Contura 72 SF that looks exactly the same as the General Electric Quadra. These ones here actually do have SCART Euro connector that's mentioned in the German text there. Add further to this, let's look at the service manual for the TX92 On chassis. the front of the service manual cover, we can see a number of companies already mentioned. Thompson, Ferguson, Normandy, Sabre, and Telefunken. Even more companies to the conglomerate. General Electric, ProScan, RCA, Street Sharks. This kid's playing with Manta Man, who's meant to be a hero, but yet looks like a villain. At least this family has got the TV in question in front of them displaying fine taste in their choice of SCART televisions. If you told me a SCART TV made in Europe, I'd say, yeah, pretty likely going to have a Philips tube inside. However, Philips is seemingly out of the equation completely with this conglomerate of companies. I suspect it'll have a Thompson tube inside. I'm curious to know if it is actually 68 centimetres or 66 we need to open it up and have a look right now. What we have, as a matter of fact, is a video color tube. Starting on the size now, it's 66, A66. Yet the catalog and the model number on the back call it a 29, AKA a 68 centimeter, when in fact it's 66. So I think it's a little bit misleading to advertise this thing as a 29 inch CRT. Video color. It's most likely made in Italy. It doesn't say where the tube's actually made, but Video Color has a factory in Italy. Before, oh geez, the original company Ergon manufactured tubes at least going back to the 60s, then RCA and Thompson bought it out in 71. The company had its peak production between 89 and 96. This one looks like it's made in 96 or at 98. Now, it'd have to be 96, I think, given the date of the catalog and everything. This would have been at the end of the peak of the company's production and in the 2000s they got bought out and some shenanigans happened and unfortunately they went out of business. Small neck board, there's our chassis, the TX92. That's what all the fuss is about. Fairly small chassis, speaker on the left, speaker on the right. While we're at it, we'll have a quick look at the remote. Not forgetting that the yoke's green in color, often the case with Thompson green yolks. You sometimes see these video colours in arcade machines as well. Here's the proper matching remote General Electric. A little bit awkward to use. The yellow and blue buttons are multifunctional as probably a few of them are but the yellow and blue are used to scroll down and up in menus whereas this black bar here left and right. Down and up, left and right. Two AAA batteries to power it. The method to get into the service mode is have your TV in standby, then turn the power off. The power is off on the television now. Hold the blue button on the remote. Keep holding the blue button. Turn the power on. While still holding the blue button, I'll just make sure it's probably properly on till I get snow on the screen, like so. You can let go of the blue button. As soon as you press the blue button now, it will go into service mode. However, this snow is very annoying to have behind the test of the service menu. So change it over to AV. Now I'm ready to go into service mode. Now I can push the blue button. And there we go. We get up the service menu. 
It's got three categories right now. It's in setup, that's highlighted. It's a little hard to see. Setup, video, and geometry. Setup, it appears you can actually change the brand of the television. Video has adjustments for red drive, green drive, blue drive. Then there's geometry, and it does have a few different values available. Vertical position, vertical amp, vertical linearity, horizontal phase, horizontal amp, and another page. Then we have another three options on top of that for geometry adjustment, so not too bad. The television's normal controls do not work while you're in service mode. According to the service manual, you press the TV button to temporarily get back to regular television controls, and then to return to the service menu, you press the blue button again. However, this remote does not have the so-called TV button to do that. If you want to get out of the service menu completely, simply turn the television off. Looking at the television's regular menu. Picture, probably sharpness or contrast. Must be channel labels on or off. And we also have a format, a 4x3, 16x9. 4x3, that's what we want. The blue button also takes us into teletext and I honestly do not know how to get out of the teletext mode even when it's displaying correctly and not jumbled like this. I honestly do not know how to get out of it. I actually think this remote is not actually the true matching remote. It is what General Electric in Australia supplied. Currently we have a Sega Saturn, an NT a Sega Saturn hooked up only via composite video. The reason I've chosen NTSC composite is because it's a very PAL oriented television and I wanted to make sure it was compatible with an NTSC composite signal. It's only composite. We need to move on to RGB to show the true power of the television. Funny little story, when I tested this model back in the shop many, many years ago, I liked it. It was quite good, except that the picture was shifted too far to the left. In those days, it was early times for the internet. I didn't even know what a service menu was. I didn't know anything about it, so I didn't know a way to, to shift the picture across. So it was somewhat of a deal breaker. Not being able to shift that picture across with my OCD prevented me from purchasing it. Fortunately, nowadays we can change these things ourselves without any trouble. Let's go on to RGB. Now we're in RGB and the picture is shifted to the left even more so in RGB. I haven't fixed it up in the service menu. I'm rest assured because I know it can be done. Now, despite the age of the television, despite it taking a good 10 to 15 seconds to actually warm up when it's turned on, despite the wobbles it's got in it, despite the blurriness that it has around the edges, despite all th these things against it, it actually looks quite good. It's, it's quite pleasing. As soon as I saw it, I thought, you know, this looks good. I love the colors, I love the look of it. It's, it's a good performer. May not be as bright and as vigorous as it was 20 years ago, but it's still quite serviceable, despite it seeing a bit worn out. Oh, I give it the thumbs up. If you see the SCART General Electrics around, go for it for sure. I do not mind it at all. I do not mind the video color. Good performance from another European brand. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.